Welcome to my new series about Linux PCI drivers. In this series of videos I will show you how to write your own um, drivers for PCI and PCI Express devices on Linux. And I will use this PCI card from Quancom for this tutorial. So this is an old PCI card but, but everything I will show you in these tutorials does also apply to PCI Express because PCI Express is compatible with PCI or mostly compatible with PCI at least on a software layer. And this card offers 32 GPIO pins which you can configure for inputs or outputs byte-wise and some GPIO pins are also interrupt ready so you can use them to generate an interrupt. And in this series I will show you how to write a basic driver for a PCI or PCI Express device, how to access the various um, address spaces of PCI and PCI Express, how to make the driver compatible with the GPIO chip implementation, so we can use the GPIOs by using GPIO set and GPIO get. And I don't know if I can achieve this, but the plan is that I will also show you how to use interrupts with this card, so we will also learn how to use PCI interrupts, hopefully. Okay, so this card is quite old and there is no driver in the mainline Linux kernel, but this makes it even greater for my purposes here. Okay, and on my main PC I don't have a PCI slot anymore, so but I'm lucky I have an old PC here which has two PCI slots. So let's execute screen fetch so you can see my old computer here. So this PC comes with an old AMD single core processor. It comes with one gigabyte of DDR1 memory. So, and I'm running Arch Linux on this PC, but what I will show you here does also apply on other, for other Linux distributions. So this is a quite old PC, but for the purpose of this tutorial, this is just okay. Okay, now let's take a look at the PCI bus with LSPCI. Here you can see all the devices and this device down here is our PCI card from Quantum Electronic Gym, GmbH. So this card is at bus number 4, device number 8, function number 0. And if we want to get the vendor and device ID of this PCI card, Let's run LSPCI again and pass the minus N option so we can see the numbers. And here we have the vendor ID which is 8008 hexadecimal and the vendor ID and the device ID is 3301 hexadecimal. Okay, so now today I will just I just want to write a simple hello world PCI driver. So a driver which registers the PCI device or when the driver is loaded and when the driver is unloaded it will unregister the PCI express device. And therefore I will use as a template I will use my simple Linux kernel module from my Linux kernel to, uh, Linux driver tutorial and I will create a new folder here which I will call GPIO card PCI TTL 32 IO. Yeah, I want to copy a folder. So let me go into this folder and let's look what's here inside. So here we have a makefile for building our driver and here we have our driver's source code. So the first thing I will do is I will rename the source code to PCI TTL 32 IO.C and I have to change this in the makefile as well. Okay, and now let's open up the source file. So this is just a simple Hello World Linux kernel module. And the first thing which I will do is I will add a new include. So we want to um, write a PCI driver. So I have to include Linux slash PCI.h. And I will also change the description for the kernel module driver for the one com PCI TTL 32 IO GPIO card. Okay. And the next step 
which I have to do is I have to define the vendor and device ID of my um, of the device I want to use. So PCI TTL 32 IO. Um, Vendor ID is 8008 hexadecimal and the device ID should be 3301. Okay. And now we have to add um, an ID list which lists all the devices which are compatible with this driver. Therefore, I will create an array of the type static struct PCI device ID and I will call it PCI TTL32IO IDs. And this should be an array. And here I can list now all the compatible devices. Therefore, I will use the um, macro PCI device. And here I have to pass in the vendor and the device ID. So let's use PCI TTL 32 IO device oh, vendor ID ID and device ID. Okay, and here I if I want to I could add some specific driver data. So, for example, I could pass an integer value here, or I can pass a pointer to a struct or something like that, but as I only have one device in this list, I won't use this here. Okay, and we have, we always have to end this list with an empty element, so the operating system knows the list is now complete when it finds this empty um, element here. And now in the next step, we have to make this list known to the user space and therefore we can use module device table. You want to add a PCI device and then we have to, we pass our ID um, IDs table here. This makes the um, ID tables known to the user space because the user space needs to know um, the table when loading a device driver. Okay, good. Now let's add a probe and remove function. So when we register a PCI um, device driver, we will call the probe function and we're unregistering the PCI device driver or PCI device, we will call the remove function. So brief function is called when a PCI device is registered and this comes with two parameters Return. okay so static int so the return value is an integer I will call the probe function PCI TTL 32 IO probe and now this comes with two arguments. The first one is from the type PCI device dev. And this is a pointer to our PCI device. And the second argument is from the type construct um, PCI device ID ID. And this is the pointer to the correct entry of our supported devices tables. So if we would have multiple um, supported devices, this pointer would point to the entry of the current device, which is loading right now. So let me sum this up for you here. So the parameter def is pointer to the PCI device. ID is pointer to the corresponding um, ID table entry and the return value is zero on success and else negative error code on failure. 
Okay, and here in this simple probe function, I will just write a line to the kernel's log and I will write PCITTL32IO. Now I am in the probe function. And as I don't do anything here, I will return zero here. Okay, and now we have to implement the, um, the remove function. So let me copy five lines here. This function is called when a PCI device is unregistered. And this comes just with one argument and it, as it is a void function, we don't have any return value here. I will call the function PCI TTL32 IO remove and the argument is just a pointer to our PCI device. And all I will do in this function here is I will just print out now I am in the remove function. Okay, so much for this. And now we have to um, create the driver struct. PCI driver struct. So therefore I will create a new struct from the type PCI driver and I will call it T PCI TTL32 IO driver. So the name should be PCI TTL32 IO. The ID table will be PCI TTL32 IO IDs. The probe function will be PCI TTL32 IO probe. And the remove function will be PCI TTL32 remove. Okay. And now here in the init function. So here I will add the comment registering the PCI device. And here I will call the function PCI register device and I have to add a pointer to my PCI TTL32 IO driver struct here. And the return value will be passed to my device and here in the um, remove function or in the exit function I will unregister and I have to call the function PCI unregister, but this is a void function here. Okay, so this is just a simple Hello World PCI um, driver code. So now let's try to compile it. And let's see how much mistakes I've made. Uh, ah, driver not device. Okay, I have a typo here. So this should be driver, driver, okay. Okay, now it looks good. Now let's try to load our driver. Therefore I have to become super user. Okay, this works. Let's take a look at the kernel's log and we see now I am in the PCI device registering the PCI device and now I'm in the probe function. So this worked. When I unload the module and let's look at the kernel's log again, we see the device was unregistered and the remove function was called. Okay, but what would happen if we don't have a PCI device which is compatible to the driver in the system? Well, let's simulate this. Therefore, I will open up the source code again and I will change the device ID to another error, uh, another value. So let's recompile the kernel module. And now let's load it. Okay, so the loading was successful, so the device is loaded. But when we look at the kernel's log, we see 
This time the probe function was not entered. So the probe function is entered for every um, PCI device with the corresponding vendor and device ID or for every compatible PCI device. And there, when there is no um, compatible PCI device, the probe function will not be called, but we can load the module anyway. And if I remove the device and look at the kernel clock again, we see we just went into the unregister or in the exit function, but not into the remove function. Okay, so I guess that's it for this simple Hello World PCI driver. I hope you've enjoyed the video and learned something. If you want to support my work, you can buy my coffee on buymycoffee.com slash Johannes for Linux. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and goodbye.